Hello, my name is Sean Bellamy, and today I'm giving a tutorial on Max for Live in Ableton Live 9 Suite, where we will be making a harmonizer for a MIDI instrument. Now, before we begin, you will need the following programs. Number one, you're going to need Max 6, a full version, either a student or a commercial version. And number two, you're going to need Ableton Live 9 Suite with Max for Live. Now, Max for Live usually comes with Ableton, so just make sure you are purchasing a license for Max for Live when, you're, when you are buying Ableton. Max for Live usually comes with Ableton, so just make sure you are purchasing a license for Max for Live when you are buying Ableton Live. Now, once you have those programs, we can open Ableton and begin the project. Today, we are just going to use the default project settings in Ableton and remove all the other tracks except for one MIDI track. Now, within this MIDI track, we're going to need to add two plugins. Number one, we're going to need to add a Max for Live MIDI effect plugin. And number two, we're going to need to add a virtual instrument for playback so we can test our custom made plugin. To find the Max for Live devices, just go to the Categories section on the left hand side of the screen and click on the sixth icon down entitled Max for Live Devices. We can now see that there are three types of devices we can create. A Max Audio Effect, a Max Instrument, and a Max MIDI Effect. Now today we are just going to use the Max MIDI Effect, and if we expand the browser you can see that there are already some presets created. If you want to create an effect from scratch, however, you just click and drag the Max MIDI Effect plugin into the MIDI Tracks device bar. Next, I'm going to add a virtual instrument. You can choose whatever you want, but I'm going to use the Play External plugin so that we have a visual when we're testing the MIDI plugin. Once the virtual instrument is selected, I'm going to set the MIDI input to my computer keyboard just for easily testing our plugin. Now we are ready to begin constructing the plugin. To open up the Max Editing window, simply click on the Edit button on the top of the plugin bar. In this window, we can see there are three key aspects in this plugin patch. Number one is the MIDI input fr from the MIDI track. Number two is the MIDI effect we are going to build. And number three is the MIDI output, which will be sent to our virtual instrument in the MIDI track. It is important to note that you cannot send MIDI information in this patch to an external MIDI port, such as Max 1 or Max 2. It is meant to only work within this one MIDI track. And also take note of the device vertical limit line in the project file. This shows the maximum height that will be shown when we see the plugin in Ableton Live. For now, we are just going to ignore it and create enough space for us to do our initial programming. To begin our patch, we need to start by separating the MIDI input data into its individual components. To do this, we will use the MIDI parse object, and below we will use the MIDI format object to reconstruct the message once we are done so it can be sent out of MIDI out in, into our virtual instrument. Now remember, we are creating a plugin that will harmonize with the incoming MIDI note messages. So we will use the unpack object to separate the MIDI note value and the velocity of the incoming MIDI message coming out of the left outlet of the MIDI parse object. Now to test our patch, I'm going to add an addition object that will increase the incoming MIDI note message by four, by four semitones, and then recombine the velocity value using the pack object to be sent into the MIDI format object. Now after that is done, we can connect the rest of the outlets from MIDI parse directly into MIDI format. And finally, we can also connect the MIDI parse MIDI note slash velocity outlet, the leftmost, out, the, the leftmost outlet, into the leftmost inlet of the MIDI format, which will allow the incoming MIDI note to be played in addition to our altered one we've just created. Now let's save the plugin and return to Ableton Live and test it. If it is functioning properly, we should create two notes that are a major third apart. It looks like
It looks like it's working fine, so now that we know the concept works, let's refine this plugin to make it more presentable in Ableton. We can now return to the editing window and add some visual objects that will allow us to control this patch from Ableton Live. There are a number of different UI objects you can use, but I would recommend using the live UI objects with these plugins just because they match well with the overall aesthetic of Ableton Live and, they're, and, and they function pretty well. For this project, I'm going to be using the live dial object, and it will be used to control the interval of the harmonizing note. Before we are able to use the dial, however, we will need to customize it in the inspector window. First, we will change the scripting name and the long name to interval underscore one. Second, we will change the short name to just one. After that, we will need to make sure that we are sending data suitable for MIDI. So we are going to change the type of data from float to integer. And finally, we will change the range of the dial so we can harmonize both above and below the given pitch up to a range of two octaves or 24 semitones in each direction. Now that our dial is ready, let's drag the addition object underneath it. We then connect the left outlet of the dial to the right inlet of the addition object, which allows the dial to control how many semitones are added to our original pitch. And finally, just for cleanliness sake, we're gonna add a load mess object, which will ensure when this patch is opened, we won't have a lingering value assigned to the addition box. So whenever this patch is open, it'll always start with, with the value zero semitones. Now that we have these objects created and properly connected, let's add one more harmonizing interval by copying and pasting our dial and addition object and connecting them in the same manner as the first one. Now remember to inspect the new dial and alter the appropriate information inside of the inspector window. And now we are on our final step, and we're going to make this patch presentable in Ableton Live. We will start by adding comment boxes for a title and a small description underneath the dials. Once those are made, we will need to select the two dials and the comment boxes, then go to the Object menu and click Add to Presentation. Notice that the items that were added to presentation mode now have a red outline around them. Next, enter presentation mode by clicking the presentation mode button on the bottom toolbar of the editing window. Once we are in this mode, we can move the objects to our desired orientation and keep in mind of the cutoff point we saw in the editing patch as the objects are being positioned. Once we have gotten the objects to where we want them to be, we need to make sure that the patcher will actually open up in presentation mode instead of the editing mode. To do this, all you need to do is click view on the top toolbar of Max and click on patcher inspector. Once inside, just check the box beside open in presentation. Now our patch will open in presentation mode and in Ableton Live, we will be viewing the patch inside of its presentation mode that we see right now. Now let's save it and try it out in Ableton. Now you can see that we can create a three note chord with one mini note input from the keyboard and the dials allow us to easily alter what intervals we want to use in our completed plugin. That concludes my tutorial of Max for Live. This was a very basic project but the fundamentals are key to creating far more complex patches in this interface and it provides a lot of opportunities to create a wide variety of custom plugins. Thank you for watching.